The Head Office Conversation series has covered a range of topics looking at industry clusters in British Columbia that uh, are strengths for our economy, where we have some leading edge technology and expertise, and where we have head offices. We've covered sectors such as visual effects, performance apparel, information and communications technology, and today, as you all know, we are looking at pocket gaming, the gaming sector. We offer it all. First and foremost, a very high caliber, a world-class workforce. Uh, the talent here is unsurpassed, and you'll see that very shortly when you hear from our presenters. We are a very competitive jurisdiction, in part because of the low Canadian dollar, but not just because of the low Canadian dollar. We are very competitive, certainly compared to our West Coast competitors, especially in California. We have a business-friendly climate, uh, which includes the lowest corporate tax rates in all of North America. We provide very easy access to the main markets that matter to you, markets in Asia, of course, North America, and also in uh, Europe. In fact, uh, Tokyo is just about opening now. And when we wake up in the morning and get to work, London is still at work, so we provide uh, continuous access to the key time zones across Asia, North America, and Europe. How can we help you? Well, there are four areas in general. We can connect you with our extensive range of contacts, both within your industry as well as with the other industry players that are necessary for you to set up a presence in this province. We offer a range of specific advice to your sector depending on your needs. Essentially, we can customize a value proposition to help you make a decision. We can assist with your corporate relocation uh, needs, of course, working with our partners in the commercial real estate, the human resources, the business professional services industries. And we can provide strategic advice on uh, all of the aspects of setup, including the launch event and the ability to plug in with decision makers, political, business, and community leaders in the province and across the country. We have a, a healthy mix of foreign and domestic companies in our jurisdiction, certainly so in the uh, gaming, film, visual effects industry, but across other industries as well. Those of you who are here for the first time will already have recognized what a multicultural diverse and welcoming city we are. So BC's got game. Major players call Vancouver home, and you'll hear from them very shortly. But first, I want to invite someone who can give you uh, an overview, uh, not just of the gaming industry, but of the tech sector more broadly. He will set the stage, and then after his presentation, I will invite our panelists uh, to their stools. But before that, let me welcome to the podium the CEO of BC Technology Industries Association, Bill Tam. I've had the privilege of leading the BC Technology Association now for a number of years, and it really is a privileged position because what we're really trying to do is set up something special, which is to grow what is arguably going to be one of the top tech ecosystems anywhere in the world. Um, you know, essentially what we try to do is provide a platform, a platform where you know, tech companies across the broad spectrum from information communications technology companies, software companies, device companies, of course, video game, digital entertainment companies, clean tech life sciences companies, all have a place where they can actually grow to their full potential. Um, and in today's global market, it's clear that the strongest economies have a fundamentally strong tech component, and BC is no different. The BC tech story has long been a growth story. And it's one that over the last decade has seen it rise to a position where it's actually grown at twice the rate of the provincial economy overall. It's about a $23 billion industry. There's over 9,000 tech companies and almost 100,000 people that call tech their primary career. Uh, what's amazing is in a province that's already seen fantastic economic growth, tech is actually one of the bellwethers of why that rising tide occurs right here. 
Um, it is, in fact, an enabler for many industries. You know, the origins of tech here started with companies like McDonald Detweiler that was in the geospatial and data area, MDI and companies that were largely in the wireless and telecommunication space. And of course, we can't forget the origins of distinctive software and how electronic arts came to be here in Vancouver. That video game start is what's actually led to one of the strongest sort of video game and digital entertainment uh, clusters anywhere in the world. In fact, right now, Vancouver is arguably the, the number one animation and visual effects cluster in the world. It is now the second largest uh, video game cluster in Canada. There's over 168 interactive companies that call this home. There's 5,500 people that work in the sector. And amazingly, and thanks to Patrick at DigiBC, two of the top six franchise games were built right here in BC. So uh, EA's FIFA game and Need for Speed. Now, what's amazing, and Powell mentioned this earlier, is that we have an eclectic, a very strong mix of both domestically based as well as foreign companies that now call British Columbia their second <laughs> home. And when they do that, you know, it's companies like Electronic Arts, it's Relic Entertainment, it's Bandai Namco, it's Capcom, it's Microsoft, it's all these companies. And the reason is really simple. Um, Powell mentioned a few of them, but I would say number one is the talent that's here. We have this interesting intersection point of talent that actually bridges creative and tech, and it actually creates all sorts of new experiences when it comes to video gaming, as well as the digital sector. Proximity is a big key. I think our access points to, you know, all along the West Coast, down to the Valley, as well as to Asia and other points, are a really important aspect of what we do. We talked a little bit about business competitiveness, some of the tax rates and some of the incentives that are there. They're definitely a nice to have when you're evaluating whether to locate your second home here in uh, British Columbia. But I think one of the most important things is that we are ready for the onslaught of more companies that want to be here in Vancouver. So alongside of our partners at HQ Vancouver, uh, the folks at Vancouver Economic Commission, the people in the BC government, at Ministry of International Trade, our friends at BC Innovation Council, and our friends at uh, Global Affairs Canada and the Department of Foreign Affairs and the federal government, I think what we're looking for is the establishment of a platform where companies, whether they're started here or they decide to locate here, can find truly the promise of greatness if they actually invest alongside with all the rest of the ecosystem. And that actually helps us, I think, cement the reputation opportunity that we consider to be ours for the taking. That's to make BC truly a world-class center and the best place to grow a tech company. So uh, I thought um, it'd be good to start off just giving folks a perspective about EA and then perhaps tell you a little bit about me and my journey and how I ended up uh, in BC and why I'm here speaking to you today. So uh, EA is a four and a half billion dollar company uh, listed on the NASDAQ, uh, founded back in the early 80s. And around about the same time, uh, a group of teenagers here in, well, out in Burnaby, um, set up a company called Distinctive Software. Um, and that company was acquired by Electronic Arts in 1991 for the bargain price of $11 million. Uh, so today, out in uh, Burnaby, um, we have uh, about 1,300 full-time employees um, we have about 2,000 bodies on the campus today, so when you include the contractors and tents we have working on our biggest uh, titles, which begin releasing in September. Uh, so we make uh, FIFA, uh, the soccer video game, which is one of the biggest video game franchises in the world every year. Um, we make NHL hockey, uh, UFC, the ultimate fighting championship game, um, and then we make this cute little game called uh, Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare, uh, which is a first-person shooter game. Uh, we also have uh, some of EA's global technology teams there working on our Frostbite uh, game engine, which is the game engine that powers most of EA's uh, video games. Um, and we have our motion capture studio there, um, which is the world's largest uh, motion capture studio. And all of EA's video games from all of our studios around the world capture all of their motion uh, right here in, uh, in Vancouver. I've been with EA for the last 18 years. I, I started in the UK. Um, then I worked at our corporate headquarters in Redwood Shores, California. Um, then I moved down to Los Angeles and I finally arrived here 10 years ago. Um, so in the last 10 years, um, I've learned to ski, I've learned to mountain bike, um, and I've become Canadian. Um, and I love this place. Um, and I'm actually now, thank you. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, so I'm actually now, uh, as uh, Dave pointed out, I'm in actually a corporate job. So my role is a global role. Um, my entire team is in California, but I chose to stay here. Um, and I negotiated with EA to be able to, to keep my, my job right here. Um, so I spent a lot of time down in San Francisco, but BC is where I, I call home. And really, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm living the dream. I have the opportunity to work in such a beautiful environment um, in the video game industry, and I can spend my weekends up in the mountains um, or on the water and enjoy all of the natural beauty that this place has to offer. So um, we'll talk more about uh, business and EA and why we're here and what the benefits are um, of being in BC as part of the Q&A, but I thought that would be a good way uh, to introduce myself. So thanks very much. Cheers. I'd like to talk a little bit about Relic to start with and just give everyone an idea of what the studio is and, and who we are. Uh, Relic was founded in 1997 uh, here in Vancouver and has, known, has been known for releasing many major franchises into the world. So from Homeworld, Impossible Creatures, The Outfit, Dawn of War, Company of Heroes, and later on uh, Space Marine as well. The studio has contributed major franchises to the industry and I think for that is, is widely known and very highly regarded and I think I'm, I'm very proud to be part of that. Uh, it's also seen a number of changes over the years. So uh, while today we're about 150 people and growing, through the years it's gone through a phase as an independent studio, uh, it was then acquired by a publisher called THQ, who uh, unfortunately went bankrupt in 2012, and as part of the auction of that uh, bankruptcy was bought up by Sega. So it's had, it's had a long, long history. Uh, but through all that, it has remained a cornerstone of Vancouver. Uh, people around the world, actually, when you say you work for Relic, they'll go, ah, Relic, yes. And they, they ask to see the business cards, because everyone knows it has a very, although we're fixing it, a very old, traditional uh, business card style. And so um, pe people love the studio, and they love the games that we make. And I think that's a big part of what's important uh, for, for the studio and why it matters to Vancouver. Vancouver. For myself, so I've been at the studio since uh, June of 2013, so uh, June 10th, uh, 2013 actually, not that I'm counting, but, uh, and, and uh, when Sega approached me to, to take on the job, I really had to ask myself, you know, what, what was the reason that I would do that? I, I've been in the industry for about 16 years. I've had the benefit of working in large organizations, small organizations, um, and, and what that's given me is the understanding of what it takes to put out AAA product, what it takes to function within large corporate environments, and also on the small studio side, uh, how to operate in that environment, and what it takes really to keep the doors open, because it, it's a challenge. You do have to pay attention to that every day, and paying attention to that really means, in some cases, making hard decisions. So that balance of understanding what a big company takes to run and what a small studio takes has really given me a lot of insight in terms of adjoining Relic. Um, when, when I think about uh, back to those days, uh, I believe that Relic has a few things going for it. We have a lot of talent, so the studio has some 18-year veterans, some 15-year veterans. We have a lot of people who've stayed at the studio for a long time. We also have some amazing technology. So we have our internal uh, game engine, which is called the Essence Engine, which really drives the content creation and the rendering of games on the screen. This is something that you can buy off the shelf today from any number of different providers, but it doesn't have the special sauce that our games require. So this is a key part of what the studio has. And then the last thing was uh, we have uh, a huge array of titles. So we have a long back catalog of games that give us a lot of reach and actually provide a very strong financial basis or a, you know, a corporate base for, for generating revenue because we have other problems to solve and it's nice to have that thing taken care of. Uh, <clears throat> so, so I believe that those things were very important. I also believe in Vancouver. So I'll, full disclosure, I am from here, so this is home. Uh, I have lived other places, so I've seen other things, but uh, I've, I've come back here. Uh, and it's not just because it's like this some days, but it's like this rarely. It's, it's never like this some days. Uh, but, I, but I believe in the city. I believe that it not just is, goes beyond uh, the skiing and the mountain biking, which are also awesome. I agree with John on that. Uh, but it's really, there's a feeling here. And I think for me, specifically in the games industry, it comes down to something that goes on. Um, it's sort of an organic resilience in the industry. And so uh, in every sector, in every city, there will be ups and downs. Things will happen. Uh, there'll be growth, and then maybe there's a system shock and studios have to close. What I've noticed in Vancouver, more than anywhere else really, is when that occurs, sure, some people lose their jobs, maybe some of them move to a different city, but in Vancouver, the majority of them get a job in another studio. 
or just as often start their own studio that turns into another massive studio. That's the magic that I think this city has to offer. And while we've seen some setbacks, I know everyone is aware that in 2008, there was a big, a big loss to the, to the industry here. Um, we've rebuilt and a lot of that base remains. And, and that's what I see the combination of a strong studio like Relic, a city like Vancouver where we can really tap into that talent. And then the third thing is the, the belief of, of the new parent owner, which is, which is Sega. So, um, <clears throat> despite all I believed about Se uh, Relic, I had to understand as well what Sega really stands for. And so as I was getting to know the executives there, um, I had to know what their intent was. And so when, when Relic was bought at the auction, there were a number of groups who bid on the studio. Uh, most of them had the plan, which was, well, we'll buy Relic, sell Company of Heroes 2, which was the game at the time, and then see what happens, which is kind of when things go bad. Sega, on the other hand, had a plan. They knew how our games fit within their portfolio of games, how our studio fit with the other studios they own, and, and they actually put together a three to five year roadmap. So in, in short, they had intent and they had a plan. And more than that, they're creators. They're, they're the head of the company believes in creativity, believes in supporting the studios. I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing at Relic if the parent owner of Sega did not believe in that as well. And so all of this, the talent in Vancouver, the strength of Relic, and the support of Sega lead into what really is the opportunity and why I'm at Relic, and that's to rebuild the studio and rebuild the city. We can only do that with the creativity uh, that, that exists in this city, and we have to build uh, new games, new franchises, and grow the studio. And we do that as part of our role in the city. This, we all benefit when good things happen to, to other studios. And so there's a bit of an older mentality where it's true we're all competing against each other, but we're not really competing just against each other. We're competing against other countries and other cities. And so what, uh, one of the things that's great about an event like this is it brings all of us together because we have to understand that uh, we all benefit from each other's successes. If something good happens to Eastside Games or EA or Roadhouse or Ninja Robot Dinosaur or whoever, it happens to all of us. When one of us has a bad patch, it ha that happens to all of us as well. So if we're all growing and bringing talent to the city, we all stand to benefit. And that's really what I aim to do at Relic is put Relic back on the map to help put Vancouver back on the map. Thank you. <laughs> so we're a mobile game studio. Um, we're fiercely independent. So everything that uh, we're bootstrapped and profitable and everything um, that we make, we choose to make. We don't really work with anyone else because like, who would work with us? Come on, right? Uh, community is everything in ESG care. So that's a big thing for us. We're from East Van and from the downtown east side, so ESG cares. A big component of our studio culture is giving back to the neighborhood that, that we're from, which is downtown east side. Um, we have 65 employees and 90% of our staff are actually from BC. I'm from Prince George, but we've been hiring people just kind of locally for a long time. And so when they did the survey with the VEC, they are like, what's with you guys? Why do you only hire from BC? Because people are hiring globally but that's just kind of how it worked out. So I think there's a lot of companies in BC that are finding talent locally from other studios you work for and that sort of thing. And 25% of our total staff are women. Um, strong relationships with all the local institutions and we're from BC. Um, here's some of our current projects. Our big one coming up is the Trailer Park Boys game. You either know it or you don't, but if you know it, you're really into it. And uh, that's gonna be coming out soon. Um, Pot Farm, Grassroots, Idle Paws, Munchie Farm. We have a bunch of other stuff. We haven't announced, but we move really quick and we launch multiple titles per year, doubling down on them. And uh, currently right now we have, we're in the top 100 grossing and I think it was eight or 10. My phone was going crazy. So we must have either, we must have either been not the top grossing in no countries or maybe we've added some more countries. Either something really good or really bad has happened. Uh, <laughs> We also make technology, so this is an example of our game technology platform that we're making right now that is actually um, our uh, custom CRM and then also our uh, ongoing analytics platform that is white labeled. And, uh, and that's it. Oh, well done. <laughs>